this really is the beginning of a new era. And I think beginning is an important part of that sentence. This is the first time I think that, you know, in a long time that Bungie has stood kind of on its own. And we're self-publishing, it's a really big deal. There's a huge opportunity here for us to really make our own decisions. It's a turning point for us. We are in charge of our own destiny. It's empowering and terrifying at the same time. There are only two groups who are gonna decide what happens to Destiny next. Bungie and the players who play Destiny. So at its core, Shadowkeep is about returning to the moon. We haven't been in the moon in a while since yeah. Destiny 1, and a lot's changed. When you go back, it isn't exactly what you thought it was. There's like huge cracks ripped into it. There's a weird scarlet fortress. And so the context of the moon has been updated entirely. This isn't just about the hive anymore. About something else, something terrifying. The moon this time around is something really scary that is playing on your fear in a way that hasn't happened before. Before it was, oh, it's a big giant thing and it's scary, but now there's actual like some psychological elements to that. How long has it sat in silence watching us? Much too long. Having Eris Morin come back instantly signals to players the tone shift and change. There's an undertone of threatening and psychological horror. You're all insufferable! We want to tap into what makes Guardians afraid. What are their worst fears? Shadowkeep refers to the things that Eris unleashed on the solar system. Nightmares are manifestations of a guardian's past. What if the villains that you thought were well into the ground actually weren't, and they were being resurrected by the darkness? Eris is trying to figure out how she unleashed this kind of madness, and so she needs your help. You can't just kill them and make them go away. What if you can't do all of the things that you've grown accustomed to doing? Being unable to achieve what you're trying to achieve, no matter how hard you try. Players, they think we can deal with this. We killed Crota, like we killed Oryx, it's like, no big deal, right? Well, you're gonna get there and you serve it's a bigger deal than you even thought it could be. The darkness is actually a lot closer than you realize. Now you know my suffering. It's been a year, basically, of just a constant two-way dialogue with all of our passionate players. Under it or on the sides of it more? The number of green... That's really informed what it is that players want out of the Destiny game and how we're evolving, not just the story of the world, but what happens to you as a Guardian. Like the, the thing that's supposed to blow you back or whatever, it's related to acceleration. Like, a bunch of the work that we're doing is about adding depth to the character sheet, you know? The teams are thinking about how do we want to evolve armor? get more stats into the game, get more player customization. How can we get the depth of pursuit for how you want to play with this awesome character you've been building now for, you know, some of us five years? And like completely new ways of deepening the like character RPG that we all know and love yeah. and want to be better.
In Shadow Keep, we are fundamentally evolving the systems and moving the world forward. You want to bring some of that sci fi element back to it, where it's yeah, like some like panels yeah, or exactly. something. We've been dancing this line between, I'm like, are we RPG enough? Are we not RPG enough? And now we're like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go all in and just say, like, hey, let's give players what they want. Allow them to kind of like customize the players and their, their habits and their game modes and all that stuff as much as they want to. So in Shadowkeep, what we're doing is changing the way that armor perks and mods work pretty significantly. Right now in the game, if you have an armor set that you like the look of, but you have another armor set that you like the way it plays, you're probably going to pick the one that you like the way it plays. Armor 2.0 is focused on allowing you to take the mods that you've unlocked and apply them to any given piece of armor. When I move my cursor over one of these mod sockets, it immediately shows me all of the mods that are available to me. Personally, I'm excited about the artifact. Players just get to kind of like fidget with these knobs and switches and do all the things that they want to do. When you get to this last tier, each of these perks gets relatively close to what an exotic might feel like. That's going to be a lot of fun. Going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Finishing moves are a new thing for Shadow Keep. What's your favorite? I mean, there's some crazy ones for the hunter. This awesome flourish where he actually does like spin in front of him, has two knives, and then just hits, hits. I was like, what the heck? Like, what game is this? Yeah, Titan Finisher. He jumps in the air, pulls back, looks at his fist, and... It's kind of like the dunk. There's so many different ways to dunk. You can behind the back, you know, 360, cartwheel, whatever. We're in the playtest lab every day trying to figure out what's good for the game, what do people want, what have they, they been asking for, trying new ideas. So I want to try, the, I've had a, a radar hiding. Let me know how it feels to get shot by the heavy bow. I am working on an exotic heavy bow, um, and I'm just working on figuring out some knockback, trying to see how big this, okay, that's probably too much, but you get the idea. This is an exotic trace rifle. Fire it on an enemy and it creates a big old crit spot. Here's a hand cannon that Victor's working on. It fires special ammo and it's a little bit like a, a one-handed sniper. Like it's actually our only hand cannon with a scope on it. Right now it kind of lights you on fire if you keep firing it too much. We'll see, some people like it, some people are kind of eh, but uh, we'll hammer it all out. All right, it's time. Oh, it's about to get loud here. 1v1. 1v1 on the board. Oh! One of the things we really want to focus on, especially with Season 8 and the start of Shadowkeep, is a renewed focus on PvP. Y'all on the other team. <laughs> We're updating labs to include some much-loved game types from the past. We're also redoing a bunch of the playlists and how they work. but. The really important thing for players to know is this is just the beginning. This is us building the foundation of what we're doing with the Crucible going forward. Previously, you would have a 20, 40, 60 hour climb before you could do what's considered in-game content. And now you can pretty much do that immediately. We want you to feel like you are in the end game from the moment you step on the planet. Leveling up your guardian and becoming more powerful, overcoming dungeons, overcoming raids. For the raid, we had multiple destinations that we were considering, and Black Garden was like immediately top of the list. And everyone was like, yes, and I was like, yes, that's the one I wanted. With Forsaken, we started finding more ways for players to customize and personalize their character and, and differentiate themselves. Shadowkeep's gonna push even further in that direction. The word which is really guiding us in a bunch of ways is depth. It's about experiential depth. When we look at how we're thinking about the next three, five years, it's really important to us. 
It's cool to have a game that you can invest in with your friends, tweak your monster killing machine and make it 2% better every weekend, doing different things and figuring out how to craft this perfect build that you feel like is your own. Like, that is cool, there's nothing nerdy about it. We're like happy to own that. We're gonna stand on that corner. As things change, uh, if the game doesn't feel like it's changing to meet the new landscape, it just all fall down. You know, part of our, our DNA is finding different ways to bring people together. We needed a way to crush the barriers between friends. We all have friends who could play Destiny, who are interested in it, um, but then we think about recommending it, like, oh man, you're gonna have to play about 40 hours by yourself, and then you gotta pay all this money, and you know, maybe you should just play something else, and that can't be the story. We need an entry point for your friends to be able to get into Destiny. This is just simply about bringing people together to make it easy for players to enter this universe. There's a, a new entry point coming out in September called New Light, and New Light is a free to download experience. We're gonna start off in the same place where Guardians first came into the world. Guardian. Guardian? Eyes up, Guardian. Work. You're alive. You start in the Cosmodrome. You're yeah. going back. Going back. Yeah, blast from the past. Okay, it's not going to break orbit, but it just might get us to the city. It's as easy as come in, make a character, play the amazing introduction to the game. And then land in the tower. And then we'll set them loose to open up the world as they see fit. And have sort of an array of potential in front of you. You can just start playing the game and get into the, some of the same activities that your friends might be playing. The campaigns from D to Year One, The Red War, Curse of Osiris, Warmind. Every world we have will be available for them to explore and to free roam and to do bounties on. Every cooperative strike, whether they're playing with friends or matchmaking, every competitive multiplayer map. The D2 Year One raids like Leviathan. Full access to, to Gambit, the, the hybrid mode that we have. All these things are available to them for nothing. We've always said that Destiny is best when you play it with your friends, and we're trying to make it easier. So if your friends who are playing Destiny are on different platforms, we're adding cross saves so that you can move between the different platforms and play wherever your friends are. Like if I'm playing and I want to move over to my PC, I should have my character go with me. We want Destiny to meet you wherever you want to play, so that's in incredibly important for us. We wanted to cross save before we shipped Destiny 2, right? Like, it, like a bunch of it was built. We just couldn't get there for capital R reasons. Um, and uh, many of those reasons have uh, disappeared. So we are headed full steam ahead on that. And we gotta figure out how we're gonna get there and how we're gonna give the players what they want. As culture as we can get. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Our original vision for Destiny was a, was a world that would evolve and change. We're leaning really hard into that because we believe that's where the future of Destiny is. The long horizon for Destiny is to become an evolving world. You know, it's you're gonna tune in to see what's gonna happen next. We can completely build Destiny in the vision that we want it to be in. A vision that isn't dictated by a commercial model or a business plan, but our creative vision and what we want to do for our players and what they want us to do with Destiny. We feel like our work isn't done. We have a series of missions that we need to finish before I think we have Destiny in the place that it needs to be, and we're back to, I guess, finish the fight, so to speak. <laughs>